March 26th Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible Deuteronomy chapter 17 and 18 of the Old Testament You must not sacrifice to him a bull or sheep that has a blemish or any other defect, because that is considered offensive to the Lord your God. Suppose a man or woman is discovered among you in one of your villages that the Lord your God is giving you, who sins before the Lord your God and breaks his covenant by serving other gods and worshiping them, the sun, moon, or any other heavenly bodies which I have not permitted you to worship. When it is reported to you and you hear about it, you must investigate carefully if it is indeed true that such a disgraceful thing is being done in Israel. You must bring to your city gates that man or woman who has done this wicked thing, that very man or woman, and you must stone that person to death. At the testimony of two or three witnesses, they must be executed. They cannot be put to death on the testimony of only one witness. The witnesses must be first to begin the execution, and then all the people are to join in afterward. In this way you will purge evil from among you. If a matter is too difficult for you to judge, bloodshed, legal claim, or assault matters of controversy in your villages, you must leave there and go up to the place the Lord your God chooses. You will go to the Levitical priest and the judge in office in those days and seek a solution. They will render a verdict. You must then do as they have determined at that place the Lord chooses. Be careful to do just as you are taught. You must do what you are instructed and the verdict they pronounce to you without fail. Do not deviate right or left from what they tell you. The person who pays no attention to the priest currently serving the Lord your God there or to the verdict, that person must die so that you may purge evil from Israel. Then all the people will hear and be afraid and not be so presumptuous again. When you come to the land the Lord your God is giving you and take it over and live in it and then say, I will select a king like all the nations surrounding me. You must select without fail a king whom the Lord your God chooses. From among your fellow citizens you must appoint a king. You may not designate a foreigner who is not one of your fellow Israelites. Moreover, he must not accumulate horses for himself or allow the people to return to Egypt to do so. For the Lord has said you must never again return that way. Furthermore, he must not marry many wives, lest his affections turn aside, and he must not accumulate much silver and gold. When he sits on his royal throne, he must make a copy of this law on a scroll given to him by the Levitical priest. It must be with him constantly, and he must read it as long as he lives, so that he may learn to revere the Lord his God and observe all the words of this law and these statutes and carry them out. Then he will not exalt himself above his fellow citizens or turn from the commandments to the right or left and he and his descendants will enjoy many years ruling over his kingdom in Israel. The Levitical priest, indeed the entire tribe of Levi, will have no allotment or inheritance with Israel. They may eat the burnt offerings of the Lord and of his inheritance. They will have no inheritance in the midst of their fellow Israelites. The Lord alone is their inheritance, just as he told them. This shall be the priest's fair allotment from the people who offer sacrifices. Whether bull or sheep, they must give to the priest the shoulder, the jowls, and the stomach. You must give them the best of your grain, new wine, and olive oil, as well as the best of your wool when you shear your flocks. For the Lord your God has chosen them and their sons from all your tribes to stand and serve in his name permanently. Suppose a Levite comes by his own free will from one of your villages, from any part of Israel where he is living, to the place the Lord chooses, and serves in the name of the Lord his God like his fellow Levites who stand there before the Lord. He must eat the same share they do, despite any profits he may gain from the sale of his family's inheritance. When you enter the land the Lord your God is giving you, you must not learn the abhorrent practices of those nations. 
There must never be found among you anyone who sacrifices his son or daughter in the fire, anyone who practices divination, an omen reader, a soothsayer, a sorcerer, one who casts spells, one who conjures up spirits, a practitioner of the occult, or a necromancer. Whoever does these things is abhorrent to the Lord, and because of these detestable things, the Lord your God is about to drive them out from before you. You must be blameless before the Lord your God. Those nations that you are about to dispossess listen to omen readers and diviners, but the Lord your God has not given you permission to do such things. The Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from among you, from your fellow Israelites. You must listen to him. This accords with what happened at Horeb in the day of the assembly. You asked the Lord your God, Please do not make us hear the voice of the Lord our God any more, or see this great fire any more, lest we die. The Lord then said to me, What they have said is good. I will raise up a prophet like you for them from among their fellow Israelites. I will put my words in his mouth, and he will speak to them whatever I command. I will personally hold responsible anyone who then pays no attention to the words that the prophet speaks in my name. But if any prophet presumes to speak anything in my name that I have not authorized him to speak, or speaks in the name of other gods, that prophet must die. Now if you say to yourselves, how can we tell that a message is not from the Lord? Whenever a prophet speaks in my name and the prediction is not fulfilled, then I have not spoken it. The prophet has presumed to speak it, so you need not fear him. God, thank you for being patient with us. When we already have you and then we, we ask for kings or we ask for presidents and you, you actually allow us to have those types of things. I am thankful considering all things that are going on in this world. I am so thankful that you are ultimately in control of everything. That everything in this world is under your power. And that no matter what happens, that ultimately in the end, you reign. I think we need to keep that in mind as we go day in and day out. And sometimes we, we get too caught up in the politicalness of this world, of, of a current president, or perhaps we're at issues with a, with a mayor or a governor. And even though uh, it is one of the blessings we have as Americans to speak our mind about the rights that have been given to us, we ultimately as Christians need to remember that you reign sovereign over everything. In uh, First Peter, you talk about submitting yourself for the Lord's sake to every human authority, whether to the emperor as a supreme authority or to governors who are sent by him to punish those who do wrong and to commend those who do right. For it is God's will that by doing good you should silence the ignorant talk of foolish people. Live as free people, but do not use your freedom as a cover-up for evil. Live as God's slaves. Show proper respect to everyone. Love the family of believers. Fear God. Honor the emperor. So again, we need to fear you. Respect your authority. Thank you for the leadership that you provide. Thank you for being in control of the leadership that goes on not only in our country, but across the world. I pray for our leaders. I pray that they will seek you for answers in how to run their governments. I ask that you help them seek you in the relationships they have if they're married and with their kids. I ask that they seek you on ways they can be leaders so that others can follow their example. Leaders across the world have a lot of power and a lot of influence over people. And I just pray that it is your will that that power and influence that they are showing is your almighty forgiveness, grace, mercy, and the commandments that you gave us. Thank you, God, for all of the 
infrastructures, political infrastructures that you set up for us way back when, the laws that you have helped teach us on how to govern those, and for your power over them. In your son's name we pray. Amen.